On today's episode, I refinish another old folding chair from my garage. It seems that I have an endless supply of old chairs in my garage. This one in particular was made by the Coronet Company, and it's called a Coronet Wonderfold chair. And it was probably made in the 1950s or 60s. Structurally, it's in pretty good shape, except for some loose joints. The upholstery, thankfully, is in great shape and just needs to be cleaned. But the finish, or what's left of it, is kind of a pale pea soup color. And I don't know if that's the original color or if it faded over the years to this color, but either way, I'm going to strip it off and refinish it in a more walnut-y color. The first step was to strip the old finish. But first, I had to disassemble the chair. The stripping process would be a lot easier with the chair in pieces. It looks like they forgot a screw here at the factory. There's a hole in the bracket for a screw, but there was never any hole drilled into the seat. But the chair seems to have held up pretty well without the screw for the past 60 years or so. These big screws that were in the leg joints were interesting. I've never seen a screw like this one before in a piece of furniture. It almost looks like a masonry screw. All of the joints were loose, so I wanted to get those apart to be re-glued. Unfortunately, they also all had nails in them. I see nails in the joints of chairs a lot, usually as an attempt by a home handyman to tighten loose joints when the glue has long ago dried up. But these appear to be original from the factory. Just going by the appearance of them, the way they were all in the same spot in all the joints, and the spacing of the nails was uniform from one joint to the other. I was hoping they were just small wire nails, so I chose to try and take the joint apart with the nails still in there, as opposed to trying to dig them out beforehand. And to do this, I just gave it a few whacks with a rubber mallet. Unfortunately, they weren't small nails, and the leg ended up cracking as the joint came apart. But it was a nice clean break, so I was able to glue it back together pretty easily.
I tried to be a little more gentle on the rest of the joints. I didn't use a hammer on these, I just tried to separate the joint by hand. They ended up coming apart with a lot less damage and any cracks that did happen as a result were pretty small and I was able to glue them up easily. Once it was all disassembled, I could start removing the finish. There was barely any finish left on it, so I chose to just scrape it off. Once I got the bulk of it off, there was still some traces of the green color in the wood, so I got out the sander. I used 80 grit sandpaper on this, which is pretty coarse. And I don't usually need to go under 100 grit for most jobs that I do, but the green color seemed to go pretty deep into the wood, so I felt like the 80 grit was necessary. And I was very careful with the sander to not go over the edges and round them over. After the 80 grit sandpaper, I went over it again with 120 grit on the sander and then finished with 180 grit by hand. After the sanding was done, I was ready to apply the stain. I used a similar staining process as the last video I did where I made the small tabletop. I used two different colors of gel stain. One color is called Antique Walnut and the other color is called Candlelight. I applied them in layers to add some depth to the color. I started with the Candlelight and applied it with a foam brush and then wiped it off with a paper towel. After that coat of stain had dried, I sealed it with a coat of shellac. And this will ensure that I don't pull up any of that stain when I apply the next coat of stain. And it will also add just a little bit of additional color. Once the shellac was dry, I applied the walnut gel stain, but I applied it a little differently than I did the first stain. Instead of wiping off the excess with a paper towel, I just let the stain set up for a couple of minutes on the wood and then took a clean brush and gently went over the wet stain 
evening out any streaks, but at the same time leaving most of the stain on the wood. This technique let me get a darker color on the wood. If I had just wiped off most of the stain with a paper towel, it wouldn't have been dark enough for the look that I was going for. After this coat of stain dried, I sprayed some more shellac on it to seal it again, and then went over it again with another coat of the walnut stain, just like I did here, just to get it even a little darker and deeper. Once the last coat of stain was dry, then I applied the top coat, which is a wipe-on satin oil polyurethane. I like to apply really thin coats, and I probably applied, I think, um, three coats in total. And of course, if you're going for more durability, you can put on more coats, put on as many as you want. But I prefer the look of the thinner coat. When the polyurethane was dry, then I could reassemble the chair. And I did choose to put the new finish on before I glued the chair back together because I felt it would be easier to do it that way. So when it came time to glue the chair back together, I made sure to put some tape around the joints to avoid getting any glue squeeze out onto the new finish. And once the glue was dry, I could screw the seat back on. And here it is, all finished. Thanks for watching.